I designed the first Arduino, the, uh, the one that was just called Arduino. Okay. <laughs> and the first Arduino USB. And then uh, the design evolved and different people got engaged in the process. Um, so my, my role in the hardware design was a bit more uh, of an ad advisory one uh, after, after that period. And I became more responsible for communication, documentation, uh, web, um, content creation and stuff like that. We started with the 8-bit architecture from Atmel um, when we made the first Arduino board with the Atli Mega 8. And uh, that worked really well. So um, we were looking for pin compatible architectures because we didn't want to rewrite the bootloaders and didn't want to rewrite the uploaders. So even though the Arduino IDE from the beginning was made in a way that it should be possible to add other boards, even though it wasn't uh, obvious, but it was possible. Now it's very simple, but back then it required a bit of tweaking. The 168 was a very easy update to at the Mega 8, and the 328 was an even easier update to the 168. And they were offering better, better peripherals, more timers, better mm -hmm. control of Pico power. So uh, the, the technology itself was improving, even at the same form factor, what made our lives super, super simple. Yeah. So we had to make some slight modifications to the software, and everything just worked out of the box. Yeah, of course, it's, it's a combination of factors. It's not just that it's an 8-bit architecture. It's like the software is there, the access. We even have information on how you can make your own board if you don't have the money to buy a board, so you can just buy the chip. and with an old computer with parallel ports, programming the bootloader on the, on the chip and start working with it. So all of those things are available there and there is always a backlog. You can access all of the software since version, since version one. So if you had a library back in the days that you still like, you can still download the version of the software and still make it work on your computer. So it's like, you know, it was very easy to use and, and also the compiler was not very big. Like, the whole Arduino software, including the Java engine, weights less than 100 megabytes. But if you uh, add like a, I don't know, complex C++ compiler for ARM chips, the, the size increases. Mm -hmm. So if you're a beginner and, and you just want something simple to get started with, then Arduino is, is a really easy choice. Because, uh, you know, you don't have to have a huge software hard to maintain. Uh, the architecture itself is super robust, but yes. these eight bit chips are, you know, I, I always make the joke that you can throw the, the board to the floor and pick it up and nothing broke. <laughs> you know, I've seen places where students are cutting a piece of the board, uh, and as long as they don't cut any critical wires, I think it's in functions properly. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, um, it's a very easy to use architecture, so, so of course it's successful. <laughs> 